the first ever video instructions for my first ever pattern. This pattern is a 1910s petticoat nicknamed the Willa Petticoat. This petticoat behind me is the final product of this said pattern and I am so excited to walk you through the assembly and construction instructions for this pattern. So knowing that I wanted to create patterns for quite some time, the one thing that held me back from doing it was having to write up in a concise and informative and understandable way the instructions for assembling the pattern. And after some procrastination from wanting to do that, I decided the best way to get this pattern out into the world was to create a instructional video. And that is this video. So the link to purchase this pattern will be down below. It is a PDF printable, so you can purchase it, print it right up, and then go on to constructing the petticoat. So you can go and do that right now if you want to. Before we go on, I do want to mention why I named it the Willa Petticoat. So the day that I put the finishing stitches on my 1918 outfit, I got the text that a beautiful baby girl took her first breath. And that was my beautiful, precious little niece, Willa Jade. And so when I was going on to create this pattern, I thought, why not nickname this petticoat the Willa Petticoat? So that is where the name comes from. So in case you were wondering, before going on to actually the instructions and assembly instructions, let's talk a little bit about the pattern itself. So this is a one size petticoat. It is not a multi-size pattern with the graded, you know, sizes. This is just one size and the actual size of this petticoat here. Now the petticoat itself can be worn with a waist measurement from 26 inches to 28 inches. Now you could even go a smaller waist measurement of 25 inches. This would just mean that there's extra gathers in the back because it's a drawstring tie waistband. And you could even go up to 29 inches waist measurement, but there would be much less gathers at the back. So the one size factor might make people hesitate buying this pattern. And I knew that when creating it, but I also knew that this pattern is super easy to adjust. It's an easy pattern to make the waist measurement larger or smaller. It's also a super easy pattern to lengthen and shorten. So I will walk you through that process in this video. So that will be a bullet point for this video. And then another thing is, there is an option that I don't talk about much in the written form of the PDF pattern, and I mainly talk here, but it's about the yardage needed for the petticoat. There is six and two thirds yards of fabric in this petticoat. Now that seems like a lot, and I was kind of shocked when I was making this petticoat that it took so much, but the main reason for it is I decided to cut the flounces as flounces. Instead of straight strips of fabric gathered up, I decided to create it as a flounce, which means it's curved. So it's smaller where you gathered it and it's larger hem. So I decided I liked the look of flounces better and that's why I decided to do that. That takes up more, but also the design of the petticoat goes like this diagram here. So on the petticoat, there is two loose edges, this one and then the bottom one. For these two edges, I decided I didn't want to deal with a hem. So hems cut on a circle are quite difficult to hem. They are literally my least favorite thing to do. And I guess that is why I wrote an ebook about hemming circle skirts because I dislike them so much. Go figure on that one. But I did discover quite a few helpful tips for hemming circle skirts. I discussed those all in the ebook and I will have that link down below. Now, that is not why I brought that ebook up because for this pattern, I didn't want to deal with that. And so I used two layers of fabric on this frill. And basically there is a seam along the hem 
and both layers of fabric, so the raw ends, are now up inside the gather. So there's no raw edge down here to try and hem. Because you have two pieces of fabric, you can turn it inside out, and now the raw edges are contained in those two layers of fabric. And what am I doing with my hands? You get the point, hopefully. But I bring that up because if you decided not to do that, that would save quite a bit of yardage. So let me explain that a little bit further. You need to cut 23 pieces of the flounce pattern. That's a lot. So there's two, then there's nine, and then there's 12 in each layer. So that's 23 total that you need to cut. Now, if you decided to make these two pieces a one piece flounce, so not have that seam and to hem that edge, you would only need 14 pieces of that flounce pattern. So that is a lot less. I would estimate about two yards less fabric that you need. And don't quote me on that, or I would do some calculations before choosing to purchase that less amount of fabric. I did not calculate that out as an option for this petticoat but I would highly encourage you to do that if you decided that you didn't want to spend money on that much fabric. So that is definitely an option, and I hope that all made sense. So I will mention the six yards and two thirds fabric that you need is of 60 inch fabric. So I did not make calculations for smaller width of fabric. That is something that I, that's a lot of math, and I, didn't feel like doing it, so I do apologize. I might eventually update the pattern to be that, to have those different width amounts. Right now, there is not. So one thing I just recommend doing is buy quite a bit extra fabric if you have, say, something like a 45 inch fabric. So that is not included in the pattern. And I, to be totally honest, I don't really know how you'd go about calculating exactly what you need. For me, I usually just wing it and add a couple extra yards to it. And I will say this pattern is fairly flexible with less yardage or more yardage even. And the reason for that is there's so much yardage in these flounces. There's just so much of the yardage goes into these. And really, if you ended up not having quite enough fabric, the easy thing to do is simply to just not gather the flounces quite as much. And then that would make all the fabric be used and it'd still be a lovely petticoat. So I will say it's pretty flexible and really you could do that even if you just wanted less yardage to use. You could just minimize how much flounce you do. You know, do very little gathered. I will also mention that when I was making the petticoat, I kind of messed up on the calculations, but I'm happy about that, is these two layers are gathered much less than this ending layer. You can slightly see it. And the reason for that is simply miscalculation. So I'm kind of happy about that. And so that's again why there's so much yardage in this is because there's so much more flounce in that bottom layer. And again, if you decided to not do that double thick hem technique, you would use much less yardage. So I would say there's a lot of flexibility in how much yards you need. Now I know that was a lot of words and I hope that all made sense. So before we go on to actually assembling and constructing this thing, I do want to mention that down in the description below, there is all the steps listed for constructing this petticoat and the corresponding time that these steps are located in the video. So when you have to come back to this video to resume making this project, you can easily find the exact step that you left off. I also created a sheet that has all the steps listed that you can print out and kind of use as a checklist for what you have and haven't done. So I hope that's helpful. I think that wraps up all the information tidbits that we need to discuss before moving on. So now let's go on to actually assembling. The first step is to print out the pattern. You will receive the PDF download link either on the website where you made your purchase or a link should be sent to your email. You now will open up that PDF. The first step is to print page number one and do the test print. This test print is to make sure your pattern is printing correctly. 
So first, just choose page number one to print. Now, check your settings to make sure your scale is at 100%. You don't want any of the other options, such as fit to page and the settings that I'm showing here. You want the custom and at 100%. You do not want anything else than that or the pattern will end up being the wrong size. So once you've chosen that 100%, you can now print page number one. Once that's printed, grab a ruler and test that two by two inch square. If it measures two by two, it's good and you can now go and print the rest of the pattern. Since page number one has already been printed at the right scale, I usually eliminate printing that again and go to page two and print the rest of the pages. These are pages two to number 12. The last page should be C4. Again, make sure your setting is at 100%. These settings can sometimes change in between, and trust me, I've done it before. Double check the settings that it's still at the same settings that you test printed that first page. Once all the pages have been printed, you can now start assembling the pattern. I've marked the edges to cut with a blue line instead of the regular gray. This is where you want to cut so that you can assemble the pattern. Having a straight edge cutter such as this definitely makes the process go quickly, but if you don't have it, scissors will do just fine. When you're cutting on this blue line, you're cutting in the middle of the line. When you align the pattern, the most important thing to align is the square corners and the pattern line itself. When you align it, you are aligning that half blue line, because you trimmed half off, over half of the gray line. And now there's just a bunch of cutting and taping to do. To save tape, I usually just tape where the pattern is. I don't tape along the whole paper edge. I just usually get where the pattern lines meet on the two pieces of paper and I make sure those are correctly lined up. Once you've got the pattern assembled, it's now time to cut the pattern pieces apart. I do wanna mention that the pattern you see here in this video is slightly different than the pattern you will receive in the download. I've made a couple adjustments and add a couple more markings on the pattern than what you see here, but these markings are only to make it more helpful and easy to understand. Let's talk about how to lengthen this petticoat. You will see a line on the two skirt pieces that is where you lengthen or shorten the skirt. Cut along this line. Once you've cut along those lines, lie them on top of a new piece of paper. I like to secure that bottom edge one to make sure it doesn't move about. I then grab a tape measure and measure how much I want to lengthen the skirt. I am illustrating a one inch lengthen. Measure both sides of the pattern, align them up and tape them to that base paper. You can now cut along the edge of the pattern to get a smooth line connecting the two separated pattern pieces. Just make sure that this edge doesn't have a bump or anything that you would see on the final product. For this one, since it's on a fold, it's a very straight line and quite easy. For shortening, you would do the same thing, but you would just trim away the pattern pieces and not attach them to a new piece of paper. Now, let's talk about how to make the waist of this petticoat larger. There are five skirt pieces to this petticoat. If you wanted to increase the waist measurement five inches, you would add an inch to each skirt panel. The first step is to grab a blank sheet of paper and put it underneath the pattern piece. Tape this securely in place. Grab a measurement tool and mark the amount of increase you need per skirt panel. Remember that there are five pieces to this skirt. Divide the total inches that you need to add to the skirt and divide it by five. This is how much you need to add to each skirt panel. I am showing a inch increase to each panel.
The pattern piece I just showed is cut on a fold. I only have to increase the one side. For this one though, there is not a fold, so I will have to add a half inch to each side of the pattern. For making the skirt smaller, the same principle is applied. Divide the amount desired by 5 and take that much away from each pattern piece. Now let's describe each pattern piece. The front and sides pattern piece is cut on the fold with a grain line indicated by the arrow. You will need to cut three of these, two sides and one front. For the back piece, you will need to cut two. The grain line again is marked. This straighter side of the pattern is the center back. For the flounce, it is also cut on the fold and you will need 23 of them. The grain line I've also marked with arrows. You then have a waistband piece and a tie. These are both also cut on a fold and the grain lines are straight as the arrows indicate. Cut out the skirt patterns as indicated. For my fabric, it was slightly slippery and I decided to go with a rotary cutter for some of my cuts, but for the flounces, I decided to use scissors. And if you're doing the 23 flounces, that takes quite some time. Now, let's assemble the skirt section of the petticoat. First, grab the front and two side pieces. We will attach these together first. These skirt pieces I attach together with French seams. I found this would be the most secure and keep my edges nice and clean. You can do whatever you'd like, but it is a half inch seam allowance. So whichever seam finish method you choose to do, remember that you have a half inch seam allowance to work with. For a French seam, I first sew about 3 16 inch from the raw edge. I then press the seam open because it is easier to turn a French seam or any seam upon itself when it is first pressed open. Once you've pressed that seam open, now turn it over onto itself and give it another pressing. Then I sew this seam about 5 16 inch away from the edge. We can now go on to assembling the two back pieces. This seam, I do not do a front seam. The reason being is the closure is back here. I leave eight inches open. This eight inches is not sewn together. Remember that. I sometimes do a double pin to remind me to not go past that pin. Start at that eight inch mark and go down to the end of the skirt. And again, this is a half inch seam because I'm not doing a French seam. Then press open that seam. To secure the raw edge, I fold that under and press in place. Here you can see I just have a folding motion to hide that raw end under the edge. Do this for both sides of the seam allowance. And then move up to that eight inches and again do the same basic motion. Of course, it's not sewn together right here, but still fold about a quarter inch in upon itself. With that raw edge secured in place, we can now sew. I am sewing just under a quarter inch away from the edge. To be safe, you could even go an eighth inch and that way you would know that you aren't falling off that folded edge. To make sure that seam doesn't start opening, I secure it with some stitches. Here you can see that tack I've done with the stitches to make sure the seam doesn't open up. With both sections of the skirt complete, we can now attach them together. Again, these will be French seams. So with a French seam, you do wrong sides together. Once those seams are sewn together, the skirt section of the petticoat is finished and we can move on to the flounces. For the 23 flounces, I will describe how you divide these for the three tiers. When attaching the pieces of the flounces together, I use a French seam. Let's talk about how we divide these flounce pieces. There are three tiers of flounces. 
On tier number three, there is two layers of fabric. On tier number two, there are three layers of fabric. On tier number one, there's just one layer. Now, for each tier, we need to calculate how many pieces of flounce will go around the skirt. On the first tier, there needs to be two flounce pieces. On tier number two, there needs to be three flounce pieces to make it around. And on the bottom, six flounces. So now let's do a little math. On tier number one, there's one layer of fabric times two flounce pieces. This equals two flounce pieces. On tier number two, there's three layers of fabric times three flounce pieces. This equals nine flounce pieces. For tier number three, there's two layers of fabric times six flounces to go around. This equals 12 flounce pieces. So total is 23. So this is how each tier will be divided up. So for tier number one, we grab two flounce pieces, sew them together, and then ruffle them. Here you can see that how I'm ruffling them is using tension by holding the thread. That's the method that I found to be the best. You can find other ways to do it, and to be honest, I don't have any calculations for exactly how you need to gather these ruffles. I simply go by looks, and I would recommend going looser, and then you can tighten them up later as you attach them to the layer that you need to attach them to. This first tier can now be attached to the base skirt. The raw edges from these connections can be either bound or left as is, or even surged, whichever you'd prefer. I left them unbound for now, but I will probably either surge them or bind them in some way in the future, but it's really up to you and what your fabric is doing. With tier number one attached, we can now move on to tier number two. For this tier, we need nine flounce pieces. These nine will be divided into three, because as we just talked about, there's three layers to this middle tier. So we will divide that nine into three sections. You now have three piles of three. Grab one of those piles and sew those three flounce pieces together with French seams. Then grab the other two piles and sew those three flounce pieces together with regular half inch seam. Once you've done that, we can now go on to assembling these three piles. Set aside the French seamed one and take the two with the regular half inch seams. You are now going to sew these two pieces together, right sides together. This piece will become the open end flounce in that middle tier. Once you've sewn these two pieces together, we now need to turn them right side out. The best method that I found is to first press open the seam. It's a bit tedious, but it makes the next step so much easier. Once you've pressed that seam open, you can now turn it right side out. You now have an edge that can be easily pressed. This is basically the hem edge. You now have two separate pieces that now need to be attached. You could sew these together first and then ruffle it, but I found it easy to just ruffle it all together. Align those raw edges, which is technically three pieces of fabric, and gather them like we did the previous tier. We can now attach this ruffled tier to the previous tier. Here you can see the loose edge that will be kept loose, and then the one edge that will have tier number three attached to it. Let's move on to tier number three. Grab those 12 flounce pieces and divide them into two piles. Remember, there's two layers down here, so you just need to divide them into two. Sew those six in each pile together with regular half inch seams. 
And now put those two very long flounce pieces together, right sides together. This is basically the same step that we did for the previous tier. Press the seam open and then turn that flounce right side out. Again, pressing the seam open makes this step so much easier. Once you've got all that ironed, we can now gather this ruffle. This tier definitely takes the longest because there's so much volume in it, but really that's what makes this petticoat so fun. We can now attach this third and final tier to the skirt. Remember, you are attaching it to that raw edge of tier number two. With the flounces complete, we can now move on to the final step, attaching the waistband. With the waistband piece, I basically fold it into quarters. Here you can see pretty definite quarters. This folds on top of each other, and at the end, I do these corners to keep that raw edge out of the way. I give this a nice secure pressing so that these folds don't come undone. After giving it a pressing, I then go sew those ends so that they don't come undone. Take your prepared waistband and you can now attach it to the skirt. Remember, if you adjusted the skirt to be smaller or larger, you will need to also adjust your waistband piece to correspond with the measurement. Tuck that raw edge of the skirt waist into the waistband. Pin it in place and then you can sew. For the tie, fold that piece in half, right sides together, and sew with a 3 8 seam allowance. To turn this inside out, I found the best method is to secure a safety pin along the seam allowance of the tie. Now, tuck that safety pin into the inside of this piece that you just sewed. You kind of have to shuffle around that end to get the fabric to start folding in on itself. Once you get it going, it's a pretty easy process of pulling the safety pin through the channel and out the other end. You then just pull it all the way through and it's turning the fabric in on itself. Once you have that turned, you now need to secure the ends. I use a needle and kind of just push that seam allowance in on itself. It takes a little maneuvering, but it eventually gets there to a nice square tie corner. You can either hand sew this, or you can bring it to your machine and try it that way. Also, remember to iron this tie piece flat. The last step of this petticoat is to insert the tie into the waistband. Stick a safety pin on the end and insert it into the waistband. Shuffle that safety pin through the waistband and pull and repeat and keep doing it until you reach the other end. That is it my friends. I hope you enjoyed this instruction video and using my pattern. Please let me know what you thought about it. And if you have any questions at all, please write me. I would recommend writing me via my email, which I will put in the description and is also on my website. I will be much more ready to answer via email. YouTube comments, especially on older videos, sometimes get lost and I can't respond to them as quickly. So I would recommend emailing me over commenting your questions. But I would like to know if you actually made this pattern and I would love to see pictures of it. 
Be sure to mention and tag me on Instagram at Bella Mays Designs. There is also some hashtags associated with this particular pattern, the Willa Petticoat, and then also the hashtag Bella Mays Designs Patterns. So be sure to tag me, mention me, hashtag those, and I would love to see pictures of your finished petticoats and any future patterns that you might make of mine. So again, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions or comments, and if you'd like to leave a review for this pattern. If you had any trouble with it, please write me first. I will do my utmost best to satisfy you and serve you well. So please write me if you have any trouble or anything like that. And then I think that's all to say. Now, as I end all my YouTube videos, go out there into your own sewing room, learn, create, and inspire. Mm -hmm.